given by Amaki, the first speaker. The Lord Mikal has asked me to give you the true history of the Sphinx. This can be traced back to Hayipta. The Sphinx was carved out of one solid block of white alabaster stone. You cannot see any traces of this stone now. Mikal, the great Lord of Egypt, was known to the Hayipshans, and in the carving of the head of the Sphinx they attempted to carve his beloved face in stone. The great carving was placed in its present position, because they knew that the site on which it stands covers the Lord Mikal's temple in Yanini. The head of the Lord of Power was carven upon the body of a lion to signify power and strength and quad. That is the only reason for the animal body. The little temple which lies nearby was once used for rites of initiation, and, later on, not always a pure rite. Can you imagine what this great alabaster sphinx looked like when it was first erected? I, Amaki, was in Hayipta at the time and witnessed the great edifice placed in position. The power of levitation which was used, was the outcome of what the Hayipshans knew existed in the power of the Amethyst and the power Lord of God. The Sphinx was considered by the Hayipshans as the emblem of strength and power in stone. Later on the emblems of the serpent and the cobra of Samana crept in through the practice of black magic by a corrupt priesthood, and which eventually caused the downfall of Egypt. The islands of Britain are largely peopled with the reincarnated Hayipshans and Egyptians. They are still under the Lord Macaw. It is these races who brought the Lion of England. At a later date, the Rose of Egypt was brought by them to Britain, the floral emblem of England. Many of the ancient scarabs of Egypt are known as the Rose Scarabs. The Lord Mikal is giving to the world much of Egypt's unrecorded history. And first speaker, given by Het, Shuma, the second speaker. I greet you. I am Het Shuma, and once lived in Haipta. The word Sphinx is a meaningless modern name invented by humans. The original Haiptian name for this was Gon Hin, a beautiful word which means guardian of the temple and Quat. The Hayipshans lived by spirit contact and knew of the position of the Temple of Elhonia in Yanini. The Great Pyramid stands over the colleges of Elhonia and Drunhia. The nation grew to heights of spiritual understanding. There is a length of time in Egyptian history, approximately 1,900,000 years which is unknown. The fall of Egypt was undoubtedly caused by the priests practicing hypnotism and black magic. And second speaker, given by Sun Hotep, the final speaker. I wish to speak about the land of Hayipta. Think of it as a second Yanini, not so beautiful or spiritual, yet so alike are they in many ways. There were twelve great pyramids, placed in clockwise direction, and they remained for many thousands of years. The Hayipshans, being in close contact with the world of spirit, knew of the twelve adepts of God, as they are known to you. Only three of the original pyramids remain. The interior of these beautiful temples of worship were filled in, interior parts added by the pharaohs for the so-called needs of the nation and quad. Can you imagine the intense beauty of the scene within these Hayipshan temples of worship? The solar rays pouring their brilliance through the amethyst stones? The amethystine coloring resting upon the worshippers? The Gonhin was built when the Twelfth Pyramid was completed, a memorial for all time. A memorial to the Lord of Power, Lord Mikal, to guard for all time the precious buildings below. With that people understood the Hayipshan idea, the power of God in stone. Time and man have defaced the Gonhin, it is no longer the beautiful face it once had. But it still conveys power, a silence, a speechlessness, three aspects of the Lord of Power. And final speaker, 